Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, so we're gonna jump around a little bit uh, in this episode uh, because it's been quite an episode. So the short of it is, is that uh, about two weeks ago, I checked both hives, both of them were looking good. Both of them had quite a bit of capped honey. Uh, everybody seemed to be doing pretty well. The Italians were a little slower um, in building up their their uh, their brood and that sort of thing than the swamp rats. This is in the far box. Uh, I think you can see all of this area that we have covered with weed cloth in order to try to uh, deal with the um, hive beetles. Uh, that has been completely um, ineffective. Uh, the hive beetles are or concentration were high in both hives. The swamp rats, she is laying absolutely like crazy. I mean, I've had to put three frames in there and within 48 hours, they have built two thirds of the frames with comb. Now, I don't know what they are today. I haven't been in here in about maybe say four days. I've been coming into this, the Italian box. What happened to the Italians? Uh, I don't know. So I have to say to you, I, I, I lost them. I think personally that they swarmed. The reason is, is because they were perfectly fine. And then I came in and there's like 50 bees left in there. And all we're doing is just hunkering a bunch of hive beetles onto two frames. The rest of the frames, no eggs, no larva, no nothing, no brood, of course. Still about uh, two, one and a half frames of capped honey still in there. Although there's a lot of sawdust, meaning that the capped material um, is down on the bottom. That's what it was the last time. So talked to my mentor and he said, split the swamp rat hive. Uh, the problem is that you're taking her DNA, which is very defensive, very aggressive, but also very active. Um, and just suck it up, split that. They'll produce a new queen over here in the Italian box, and then you'll be running. The queen will have enough time. It's early enough in the season. She'll have time to go out and to be bred by the drones. Lots of drones in the uh, swamp rat box also. Um, she's producing lots of drones. Uh, so that box is really healthy. Now, I did feed them once. Um, because they were sewer, seriously, seriously defensive and aggressive like they had been during the dearth last year. Uh, and I'm going to feed them again. That's what this black um, container is. Sugar water, one-to-one. -one. And then we're just going to see what we've got. And uh, my intent is to split, put f um, honey, food, and brood over and into both boxes. And then let them produce a uh, queen. Hopefully, maybe, she might be actually be thinking about leaving. Uh, and she might have produced a queen cell. We'll see if I get lucky, then I could take that queen cell, put it over it, you know, it would increase the uh, process or qu quicken the process quite a bit. So let's get on it, see what's going on guys. All right, thanks again for, uh, you know, being here and for uh, the support. Okay guys, so this is what I've been looking at. Uh, you can see there's a drone right there. Couple drones, um, lots of, bees very crammed in there uh, here's their little watering trough it's empty it takes about only took about yeah 48 hours for them to empty all three containers so they're definitely a little hungry uh, but they're very busy little bees these two the light colored ones uh, are the new frames that i put in and those were the ones that the last time i came in here after less than 48 hours, they had built comb almost all the way down them in that quick period of time. So they want the space, definitely. Now they're gonna get very defensive, I think, here in a second. Right now they seem to be actually quite docile, but that's just not their nature. Okay, so you can see, we're already gonna come out doing a little inspection. So all I'm gonna do here, um, instead of boring you, is I'm just gonna simply pull this divider out. I'm going to remove this food trough so I can fill it. And then I'm just going to open up a couple of these to see particularly where 
they are on this. I would like to find the queen because if I can find the queen, I'll pull uh, the other, I'll pull some of these panels out or frames out and put them over on this into the Italian box. But let me just, I'll start to do this. I don't want to bore you with a bunch of, you know, shenanigans you don't care about. So I'm just taking the hive tool and we will just uh, get in here and um, pull a couple of these frames out and then I'll let you see what that looks like. All right. I told you I'd bring you back if I saw anything interesting. I thought this was interesting. Them just trying to build comb on the bottom of anything, which makes me think that they're probably already full of these and they're just trying to make extra comb anywhere they can. Look at that. Okay guys, so they've been a bit defensive. Um, this frame, which was pretty much all capped honey. Now, let me just pull it out of here real quick. So you can grab the, see if I can grab a hold of it and pull it out. Which pretty much was all capped honey. Now you can see has quite a bit of, uh, well, has some uh, drone brood on it. That's drone brood, that stuff at the bottom. Yeah, more drone brood over there. I don't see other, yeah, some little bit of brood there. But unfortunately, since there's brood there, I mean, it's possible the queen's on here, so I need to check each one of the frames just to see what we got. This is only the first, this is with a second frame, and it's already got brood on it. I don't know if you can see her. She's right there. Yep, see how long her thorax is and see how it's sort of reddish? Yep. She's an angry little girl. I've gone through all of them. I found her, as you saw. I couldn't find her a second time, but I believe she is on uh, this frame. Um, doesn't really matter, even if she were to be over on one of these three frames, which I'm moving over to the other hive, she, uh, then she'll just be over there, right? And they'll have to do, one of the boxes is gonna have to, to uh, make an emergency queen. That's just the fact of it. It doesn't really matter which one it is, to tell you the truth, I don't think. Oh, whoa. I didn't realize this. I had forgotten one frame. No, I don't think she's on this one. I hope not. That would be bad because I wouldn't want her, uh, you know, out of the box. I wonder if I should leave this one. Well, I guess if they both have, each have four frames, that'd be fine. Now, let's get back to it. All right, sorry guys, my phone of course died. But um, I'm gonna try to back this up a little bit and get you uh, the other pictures. But these are one, two, three, four, five. These four frames are from the Swamp Rats. This one frame was capped honey uh, from, from here. Um, so, what we're going to do is I need to put a feeder tray in there. I need to back this out and put a feeder tray in there. So I'll show you that. Come on, guys. So day two of the honeybee split. Um, kind of excited. Uh, what I see is not a bloodbath. So don't know if you can see through all this. Um, but the number of dead bees out in front of the hive uh, is not really that much greater than it was. Maybe a few, but they may be just cleaning things up. So you can kind of see that they concentrate. Uh, see, right now there's a dead bee, and it looks like they're about to drop it. Can you see that? A dead bee, they're about to drop it out of there. I'm not... I think that they're... Yep, they just dropped the bee. Obviously, I'm hoping that the... Italians and the swamp rats are sort of getting along in that box and that they're not massacring the Italians. Um, they were, the Italians were huddled at the, um, at the mouth or the entrance to the hive pretty much all day yesterday. Uh, and I said, well, you know what? They probably won't survive the night if they can't enter into the, 
into the uh, box itself. When it came out a little earlier this morning, um, I found basically the same situation we see now, which is still a huddle there, but it doesn't seem violent. It doesn't seem extreme. I don't see lots of dead bees. So I'm thinking that, you know, the Italians being such a small percentage of the population just assimilated uh, to the new conditions. Now, of course, the new conditions for the swamp rats is a bit challenging as well because now they don't have a queen. And I don't know exactly how long it takes them to figure that out, uh, but I dare say they probably know that now. So I'm hoping that they're going through the process of correcting themselves and, and creating, uh, giving royal jelly to one of the cells that was in there so that they could uh, create a queen. Now the swamp rats over here um, are, are still quite busy and active. So their demeanor hasn't changed a lot. And in some ways, I think it's good that the, this new hive uh, is not swarming so much. And the reason I believe that is because that means they're forced together. And I, the first thing I want them to do is to sort of assimilate and acclimate to the box that they're in. I do believe I saw one honeybee come out of the new box and fly over to the old box. So I am a little bit concerned about that because, of course, my not being very knowledgeable, my inclination would be to say, well, they would smell that. They know their box, so the orientation is actually back to their old box, and then they would go in there and smell their, the queen that they know. Why wouldn't they just tr go back to the, to the same box? Uh, and maybe some of them will. The foragers, the ones that are out flying around, they'll probably come back to their old box. But the... Um, what we call them, nursing uh, bees, uh, they'll just stay in this box and hopefully they're the ones who will create the new queen. But I'm just hoping that they'll generate enough of a, or maintain enough of a population to get themselves going again, you know. Anyway, so that's where we are. Right now, uh, I, I'm out here because I want to open them up and feed them. So I'm going to try to nurse, obviously, and caretake them a little bit more than I normally would uh, for the next week uh, or so and make sure that they have lots of food and that they're not, you know, in a, you know, desperation as far as when it comes to food. Okay, now I'm just going to sort of open this up for us a little bit, just so we can take a look and see what their behavior is and see how much they filled up the box. It looks pretty good. Uh, you can still see that super seeded cell down there. Of course, ultimately, I'm going to be looking for uh, a, um, a queen cell, but it may be a little too early for them to have gone that route. Uh, I'm a little bit upset by the number of dead bees or dying bees I see at the bottom down there. See, there's quite a few. And I'm afraid those are Italians. You know, on further looking at those bees, they look bigger to me and they almost look like they're drones. Like the drones are dying. Definitely much, much, much less defensive. And there's a good number of bees in here. Yeah, fair number of dead bees in the bottom. That's sort of upsetting. Because it does make me think that the transition may have been a little bit harder for the Italians than I had hoped. You know, I'm just, I had to sacrifice them. I mean, at the end of the day was their hive was dead. You know, they could have all been dead. Uh, but those guys had an opportunity to assimilate and survive. And I didn't know if it was in the B mindset to be able to do that. And we'll just, I mean, we'll just see. Some of them probably did and maybe some didn't. All right, guys, day three. Uh, things seem to be pretty good. 
Uh, they did clean the box quite a bit, so you can see all of the bees that are now laid out in front of the, um, the new hive. So, yeah, I dare say the Italians didn't fare well. They were A, way too docile, and B, just way outnumbered. And to what degree they were or were not assimilating, maybe some of them were able to stay, but uh, apparently it was, you know, the process. So now what am I doing? Well, A, I'm gonna feed the hungry uh, swamp rats because they're always hungry because they are busy. I mean, look at them. But even these guys are a lot busier than the Italians were when they were here. So being the sisters of those guys, you know, they still carry that trait with them. Now, uh, well, let's see. What I'm looking for in their hive is a queen cell. Uh, that's all I'm looking for. I'm hoping that I, you know, one of these times I'm going to open it up and there's going to be a queen cell. But otherwise, I doubt they will have consumed any of their food. They didn't consume any of it yesterday. Uh, but if they have, great. Otherwise, food for them, search here. All right, guys, let's get on with it. Okay. Oh, nice. That's, I'm very happy about that. So they've, they have consumed about half of their food. Uh, that's good. That means, you know, they're here. They're using it. That makes me very happy. Woo, look at the number of dead bees in the bottom. Oh, my heavens. Not good. Not good. Ah, yeah. That upsets me a lot. I'm sure those, most of those are Italians. But if you look at the swamp rats, they always seem to have a very high attrition rate for some reason. Look at the drone brood. My heavens. Can you see down in there? On that, not this, not this um, uh, uh, honey foam frame, but down in the bottom. They have drone brood. And see the supercell that's sort of sticking out there? That's supercell? Superseded cell? But that is not necessarily a queen cell. In fact, I believe it's not a queen cell. These guys are slightly more defensive um, than the uh, than the Italians were. Wow, that is really alarming. The number of dead bees is really concerning to me. But the population still seems to be quite high. I, uh, I don't know what to think about that. I'm going to have to I'm gonna have to uh, speak to my mentor about that. They've gotta be able to clean this space up. I wonder if I could clean it up for them. Give them a little bit of a head start anyway. Okay, uh, this frame I'm gonna pull it out so you can see what I was talking about because there's a whole lot of brood on here. <sighs> okay, so there, that's a lot of drone brood right there. With some honey on top, that's how it's supposed to be. And nectar. And then, they have cut a hole through the middle of that hive and the, re the frame. And the reason that they've done that is because I made a mistake in building the frames and the frames are too wide. So they can only go about through the bottom. So I did notice that they start, both hives started cutting holes through there. This is all drone brood. Just a little bit of worker brood there. Do not see any hive beetles at this moment. Remember, the only thing I'm really looking for, just real quickly, is uh, a queen cell.
pretty good brood there. That's nice. And it's not drone brood. Oh, pretty nice brood there. And again, it's not drone brood. Oh, that's interesting. So intellectually, that makes sense. How are they going to produce a queen cell? They're gonna produce a queen, but how are they gonna produce a queen cell? She would have to do that, right? Because she, there's nobody there to lay inside of that, this, the cell. So they're obviously gonna take one of the cells, so it's gotta be a superseded cell. I don't know if it's the one that we saw, however, because that superseded cell came from that hive. So whether they'll use it or not is sort of a mystery. Okay, let me just check this, these uh, two real quick, and then I'll get back to you. Okay, guys, um, so I went through the, uh, the last two frames there. A nice brood. Again, good larvae. They're still, you know, tending to everything. They look to me to be healthy. Um, you know, a little bit defensive, but not crazy so. So it's, it's just still a small hive. And once they get a queen, like I said, they, you can't, they can, obviously you're not gonna have a queen cell drop down below the frame or below the comb, like you often see. They're gonna do a superseded one because they, uh, you know, I, I, I took the queen away from them. So that meant what she had laid is what they've got to work with and that's it. So they're gonna to have to deal with one of those cells to turn it into a queen cell. All right, guys, so it's about four days since I've been inside of the boxes. Uh, as you'll recall, with this box, which used to be the Italian box, um, it was, uh, we're looking for some activity associated with um, building a queen. Uh, so we're going to go in there, we're going to look at it, and we're going to see, do we see any indication that they're giving royal jelly to a, um, either an egg, or I think they can do it with larva too, uh, and building a queen. Uh, the other ones, we're really just going in to see how much of the hive they've occupied uh, and make a determination whether we need to give them more frames. They're still extremely active and um, still quite aggressive. These guys actually, for some reason, I don't know if it's the box or what, it's like, these are the sisters of those guys, but the, I opened it up this morning just to see if they were using some of their sugar water and whether they needed any. And uh, I was able to do it without anything on, and they, they were very docile actually. So I don't know what it is particularly about being around that queen, but she is sassy and she deserves her name, Swamp Rat. So that's what we're looking at, right? And so if, if we do not have any activity um, associated with building a queen in this hive, then I am going to have to take a frame that has eggs on it that I can absolutely confirm there are eggs on it from that other hive and move it over here. Uh, because she is definitely producing like mad. It's not gonna bother her to lose a frame. Um, and these guys need to, to do it because otherwise they die off, right? I think their worker bees only 18 days or something like that, um, life, life, lifespan. Uh, so they'll start dying off if, I, if we don't have um, a queen. And you gotta remember, it takes, oh, what did I hear? I heard, is the gestation period um, something like 18 days and then like another uh, week and a half or something like that for her to go out and to be mated by a drone and to come back? I mean, it takes, it's a lot of time. So I need to make sure that these guys continue to be plied with eggs and brood. And I can take it from that other hive uh, and keep their numbers somewhat in check. So that's what we're looking to do, all right? Uh, but quite docile, you can see. They're not coming out at me. Now we get over to the other box and I do even this much, they will already be swarming around me and at least a couple will come and sacrifice themselves on my veil. All right, so this hive was honey, capped honey, and it appears to be still capped honey. I'm sorry, this frame, did I say hive? This frame, because it was all capped. So they do seem to be uncapping it, but they really haven't been, they did, you know, they ate food, but it took them all four days to eat that food. The other guys 
24, 36 hours, they're, they're dry. Okay. Oh, nice. You see the stringing? That's very nice. That's very nice to see. See the stringing? Okay, that stringing means they're building comb, all right, which is a means they're expanding. All right, we have capped honey up above. This is new. This, uh, I think it's new. It looks to me to be new, although it doesn't look right because it looks like it's drone brood. Okay, so I'm looking for anything that would suggest queen building activity. So I am looking for this sort of thing where you have a superseded area. Um, this is intriguing to me, but in all honesty, it also kind of looks like drone brood. That area there looks interesting to me, and it may be queen cell activity. Remember, they would have to take whatever they got. I don't know, it looks like drone there. They would have to accept whatever they have, right? Take whatever they got, because obviously there's nobody to produce more. So wherever the eggs had been laid is where the eggs have been laid. And see this side, that's all drone. But this, look at this here. Now that's intriguing. That's very intriguing to me. That looks like queen cell. They'd sort of move off of it a little bit. See how that is? And they're, they're inside of there. Look at the bee, right? Is inside of there tending to it? I think, I really do believe that that's a queen cell. That they are feeding royal jelly to. If you guys know, if you guys know, please comment. Please give me your thoughts. Because that, to me, unlike the drone brood, you see how they're still, there's like big popcorn, right? That's drone brood. But this one is definitely an extended cell that was not previously there. And look how calm they are. I think they're building a queen. I really do believe that. And I'm about as ignorant as anybody else. So it's hope that you hear in my voice, not knowledge. But I do believe this is consistent with what I have read. Oh, they are so quiet and docile. Now, normally without a queen, they say they should be quite agitated. I'm not seeing any hive beetles right now, which really, now you see some drones right there? I hope you can see that. I know my shadow, all that sort of tomfoolery going on doesn't help, but I do believe that we have hope for success and not ignorant hope. Reason to be hopeful. Still some broods, see the pollen there, all the different colorations of pollen. That's good news. Uh, looks like they've got, yeah, that's all pollen there. Some uncapped honey. I'm sorry, over on this side, they've got a little bit of brood. Uh, disproportional amount, unfortunately, disproportional amount of drone brood. And I'm not sure if that's because drones take longer. And so all the workers have been hatched out or whether uh, I, I tried not to grab a disproportion, obviously grab a disproportionately disproportionate number of um, drone cells because I didn't want any drone cells, frankly. 
right? That, that's the last thing they need right now is to be messing with drones and pain and, and you know, um, feeding those knuckleheads. They need to be focused just on the ladies and bringing themselves a super queenie lady. Okay, guys, with that great news from this second, now we'll call it second hive box, regarding what appears to be the building of a queen, we will now go into the swamp rats, and we're looking, again, for two things. We're looking for how much have they occupied of the box, and, of course, feeding them. Uh, now we don't have to look and see um, if she has you know, a, a good frame with cells and larvae on it to give uh, to box number two, because I think box number two is actually taking care of itself. It's definitely defensive. Do not like the white bear. Look at him. Very defensive. Building comb on the bottom of the trough. Again, I've knocked that off every single time. Whoa, they are full. Whoa. I mean, obviously, I'll check it out, check it out, check it out. But they are full. Do you see that roach? That was a big, I think, German roach. What are they doing? Building comb. Building comb. They've got some capped honey and some uncapped honey on there. And they are just building comb. Now this is interesting. This is what I'm talking about. Do you see that? You know what that is? That is the same thing that's happening over in the other box. And I believe that's a queen cell. And why would she build a queen cell? Because she's thinking about swarming. I wouldn't even take this frame out, except for it kind of looks like they may have another queen cell going there on the left-hand side. That would be the second queen so I don't think she'll do that would she yeah I'm telling you right now they are packed in here she is she's she's good she wants to swarm oh I see her wow there she is she just happens to be right at the top of this frame um yeah so I put two frames in here that are new frames they'll be easy to get out so I won't disturb the hive too much and they'll give me a good indication of whether she feels they have any space available. Because if this is filled with comb, she's definitely going to be worried. Oh my God. Look at what they have done. That frame was empty. And look at the comb and look at the, the brood that's on there. She is a workhorse. And she is not happy. She is going to swarm. I'm telling you that right now. Now, the question is, or was previously, do I care if she swarms? She's so mean and miserable. Would it be good that maybe she swarms? But she's still going to pass on her DNA. To the next one so I'm sort of thinking I'd like to keep her and then maybe take this one with a, a queen cell in it put it over into a swarm uh, box swarm hive or trap I guess uh, and then just let them 
hatch her out and I'd have three hives. So maybe I'll do that. Wow, this is exciting, but it's also obviously problematic. So let me get back to you, here we go.